Joseph Conislaif and the terror wrought by the Lord's Resistance Army, LRA, span over three decades, leaving an indelible impact on northern Uganda and surrounding regions in Central Africa. Connie's story is not just about the brutality of a warlord but reflects the socio-political dynamics, the manipulation of religious beliefs, and exploitation of marginalized communities. From his initial rise in the late 1980s to the eventual decline of the LRA's power and influence, Connie's tale is a reminder of the lasting consequences of conflict on societies and individuals, early life and the roots of the LRA, Joseph Rauconi was born in 1961 in Odek, a village in northern Uganda, into the Ekoli ethnic group. Raised in a Catholic family, he reportedly exhibited an early interest in spirituality, influenced partly by his cousin Alice Oma, the spiritual medium who led a religious movement known as the Holy Spirit Movement, HSM. Alice claimed to communicate with a spirit called Lequina and led a rebellion against the Ugandan government in the 1980s, fighting in the name of Ecoli liberation and spiritual purification. Although the movement was short-lived and ultimately defeated, it provided the foundation for Connie's own spiritual and military ambitions. In the aftermath of the Ugandan Bush War, which brought President Yoweri Museveni to power in 1986, the tensions between the new government and the Ekoli people in northern Uganda deepened. Kony capitalized on these tensions, positioning himself as a religious and military leader and claiming to be chosen by God to protect the Ekoli. He established the Lord's Resistance Army, LRA, in 1987, initially presenting it as a continuation of his cousin's movement with the aim of overthrowing Museveni's government and creating a theocratic state based on a distorted interpretation of the Ten Commandments, ideology, and the rise of the LRA. Connie's ideology was a unique fusion of Christian teachings, they call his spiritual beliefs, and his personal interpretations. He claimed to be guided by spirits who provided divine instructions for the LRA's mission and conduct. Through this blend of mysticism and religious rhetoric, he convinced his followers that they were fighting a holy war with himself as a prophet who could lead them to salvation and protection. In Connie's vision, the LRA was not only a military force but a religious crusade. However, as years passed, the movement's ideological claims became increasingly hollow, serving more as a pretext for widespread violence and coercion. The LRA's early operations included guerrilla warfare tactics, but as the Ugandan government resisted, Kony's campaign of terror intensified. The LRA began targeting not only government forces but also civilians, including the Ekoli people whom Kony professed to defend. This shift marked a descent into unchecked brutality. As the LRA attacked villages, looted resources, and committed horrific atrocities. Rather than fighting for equally rights or a divine purpose, Connie's army became a vehicle for terror and destruction, wielding fear to control both his followers and the regions under his influence. Tactics of terror, child soldiers, and civilian attacks, the LRA became infamous for its use of child soldiers, with Connie systematically abducting children to serve as fighters, laborers, and wives for himself and his commanders. This strategy expanded his ranks and created a loyal, malleable force instilled with fear and trauma. Forced into this life, children were frequently forced to commit violence against their families or communities as a form of psychological entrapment. Ensuring they felt alienated and dependent on the LRA for survival, beyond the use of child soldiers, Connie established a strict moral code based on his interpretation of the Ten Commandments, forbidding theft, adultery, and alcohol consumption within his ranks. Violations of these rules were met with brutal punishment from mutilation to execution. This code, however, did little to restrain the violence the LRA inflicted on civilians as the army committed widespread atrocities, including murder, rape, and mutilation. Connie's reputation for using extreme violence to enforce discipline and control his followers allowed him to maintain authority, even as his ranks grew through forced recruitment. The humanitarian impact on northern Uganda, the LRA's activities had a devastating impact on northern Uganda. The violence forced hundreds of thousands of people to abandon their homes, leading to the creation of internally displaced persons, IDP, camps where people sought refuge from Connie's forces. 
However, these camps were overcrowded, unsanitary, and under-resourced, resulting in widespread hunger, disease, and mortality. The displacement and violence disrupted local economies, especially in rural areas where farming was a primary livelihood. Fear of LRE raids made it unsafe to work the fields, leading to food shortages and economic collapse in many villages. The humanitarian crisis in northern Uganda attracted the attention of international organizations. With NGOs stepping in to provide food, shelter, and medical care to those displaced by the conflict. However, these efforts were often limited by insecurity and logistical challenges. The psychological toll on affected communities was immense. Survivors, especially former child soldiers and abductees, were left traumatized and stigmatized, struggling to reintegrate into society. The LRA's tactics left deep scars with entire generations bearing the marks of the violence and instability Kony inflicted upon them, regional expansion and elusive tactics, as the Ugandan military intensified its pursuit of the LRA, Kony and his forces began to move into neighboring countries, including the Democratic Republic of Congo, DRC, South Sudan, and the Central African Republic, CR. This cross-border movement allowed the LRA to evade capture and maintain its operations. The vast, ungoverned spaces in these countries provided Kony with sanctuary, and then the porous borders made it difficult for Ugandan forces to pursue him without sparking regional conflicts, international attention, and the Kony 2012 campaign. In 2005, the International Criminal Court, ICC, issued an arrest warrant for Kony, charging him with crimes against humanity and war crimes. This warrant marked one of the earliest cases brought before the ICC, underscoring the severity of Connie's actions. However, logistical challenges and Connie's ability to evade capture stymied international efforts to bring him to justice. In 2012, Connie gained global notoriety through the viral Connie 2012 campaign by the non-profit organization Invisible Children. The campaign sought to raise awareness about Connie's actions and mobilize support for his capture. While it succeeded in making Kony a household name, the campaign faced criticism for oversimplifying a complex conflict and for its emphasis on awareness over concrete solutions. Despite its flaws, the campaign highlighted the power of social media to bring attention to human rights issues, even if it fell short of generating lasting change. The decline of the LRA and U.S. stand down by the mid 2010s, the LRA was significantly weakened due to sustained military pressure from the Ugandan government and international forces, including a contingent of U.S. special forces. This combined effort involving the African Union Regional Task Force led to the capture or defection of many of Kony's top commanders, diminishing the LRA's operational capacity. With fewer followers and limited resources, Kony's movement lost much of its ability to conduct large-scale attacks. In April 2017, Ugandan and U.S. forces announced the end of their hunt for Kony. A Ugandan military spokesperson explained that the LRA, now reduced to an estimated 100 fighters, no longer posed a direct threat to Uganda. The decision to stand down underscored the assessment that Kony's organization was no longer a significant destabilizing force. Though he remained at large, while the U.S. government continued to offer a reward for information leading to Kony's capture, the practical aspects of the international pursuit concluded, marking a symbolic end to one of Africa's longest-running insurgencies. Kony's whereabouts and continued evasion reports regarding Kony's whereabouts have surfaced periodically since 2017, with unconfirmed sightings and intelligence suggesting he has sought refuge in various locations. In April 2022, some former LRA members reported that Kony was hiding in the Darfur region of Sudan, where he allegedly issued sporadic orders to his remaining fighters. According to one ex-fighter, Kony's followers were tired and unmotivated, with many abandoning the LRA in favor of a return to normal life. These reports indicated that Kony's support had dwindled significantly, with even his most loyal followers losing faith in his cause. In April 2024, intelligence suggested that Kony was located in a camp near the village of Yemen. The situation became more volatile that same month when the surrender of 14 LRA members to government forces prompted an attack on Kony's camp by the Russian paramilitary group Wagner. 
Kony and his remaining force of 71 fighters reportedly fled towards Sudan, underscoring his tenuous position and vulnerability as his support network continues to erode.